All right, people. So this is an coaching blog going over a couple of pictures that were posted in the, um, I think it was the Barebow Project group or the Barebow group. I don't know, but you know, there was, there was some comments about, you know, I'm not sure what's going on or, or, you know, getting these wild shots or they're unexplainable, you know, and sometimes I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that's the case necessarily. Um, I think, you know, good shots are good shots and, you know, you, you're hitting, if you're hitting middle, on good shots, you have to learn to recognize the difference of when you, you're like, oh, well, that seems like a good shot, but it doesn't hit middle. There has to be something else going on. You could still have a good shot, you know, say, say you have a good release mechanics or whatnot, but you have to be able to recognize like, and I'm going to give you an example on this target here, because I commented on it. Um, and just to have Kind of generate a little bit of a discussion about these shots so let's look at these two arrows right here that are up high there's a couple of things that can actually make this happen and you don't even know um everything from um too much finger pressure um up against the knock to healing the bow um if you Say, say your point on wasn't quite at the middle. And right before this shot broke, you decided to try to move it up toward the middle. But instead of, because you know you shouldn't be moving your bow arm, you end up going like this, pushing that heel up and you get that high hit. Um, I've also had these shots happen where if I do, if, if while I was shooting um, NTS, if I really got into the coiling action versus not coiling, I would actually have high hits. Um, it was really, it was really crazy, but super consistent that if I went a little too wide on my stance and then, so I had a, a wide, very open stance and did extra coiling, it would actually affect the way that I would finish the shot and I would end up going high. Um, quite often um it also could have been that i was actually drawing the bow more a little bit too um every once in a while which you know if you're not someone who pays attention to your stance you know think about this for a second if you are not very specific with how you set your feet you happen to set your feet a little bit more open on a shot and then that's going to allow you to rotate more in that quote unquote coiling action and ultimately end up drawing the bow a little bit more. Um, so it's, again, it's, it's just some, some ideas, ways for you to start analyzing your shots and realize that, you know, in this situation, I think these are all probably really good shots right here. I also think that these right here are super consistent. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like eight shots that's almost a third of these arrows in a group that is so tight that they would all be in the 10 ring had you move that group over so you know what could be happening here well it could be a, a variety of things um it could be anything from the visualization of the tip of the arrow to lighting to you know what if you know hear me out what if these shots are actually really good shots? So I'm saying we're giving these the green because we're going to say green is go, green is good. What if these are actually really good shots that is where the tune actually is, but these shots, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with yellow. Well, no, it's in the yellow. <laughs> Let's go with a different color that we don't see on this target. We're going to go with, uh, I don't know if this is magenta or whatever. Let's look at these arrows now. Let's say that this bow arm, same bow arm we had here, were pretty good, right? But the group opened up a little bit, and it could be just inconsistency in the release. The way that the float is happening, the way that the release 
the string is coming through those fingers. Um, or, you know, it could be that there's some letting go of the string happening. The aim was still good, but because of the inconsistency, this shooter is actually hitting to the right. These shots, because of how tight and consistent they are, is where the actual tune on an actual good shot, but we have this tendency, so our tune looks, we're like, oh, well, we're hitting middle, and the release feels okay, but, and, and this is good shooting, so please understand, like, this is being very, very finite with your analyzing of how things are going, um, you know, and we have to be able to to deviate from that and talk about it um it's these are things that i've seen happen um myself so it's 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 a thing so let's go down to these bottom ones so let's go right here let's talk about this lower few right here so these shots could be anything from getting stuck low you know because we if we are aiming if the aiming is the last thing that we're doing before executing, it very often can produce from target panic, the, that feeling of, of um, excessive weight that we can't lift our arm. That's not really the case. You're anticipating letting go because the, the visual of the tip of the arrow getting to wherever our aim point is, is resulting in a premature um, um, execution, which results in the arrows hitting low. So if this person is point on, so we're talking over the gold, and if they're getting stuck, let's say middle of the gold, um, or they're only getting to middle of the gold, that's where they're hitting. All right. Um, and, and that's that's not a guarantee. They could just be they're dropping their bow arm. It could be a mixture, including, and I'm going to circle these at the same time because I didn't mention it and I should have. It could be a difference of anchor. They don't have a definitive anchor. They don't have a really good solid spot. You know, um, corner of the mouth is is good and can do very good, but it is sort of fluffy in there. And I could see um, now that I switched to upper eye tooth for indoor with my index finger and then lower eye tooth for outdoor with my index finger, um, I can see how, you know, this inconsistency will produce that you could be concentrating so much in your bow arm and your release, but you're missing. You're not, you're not consistently hitting that same anchor. Um, that's a practice thing, you know, that, that could happen. Um, you know, and, and just to, I'm going to clear this whole thing out. Here's another option across the board with this situation here. All of these arrows also could be mini collapses probably more so right here now we're talking a right hand shooter you can you can figure it out for a left hand shooter these could be mini collapses and when i say mini collapses that means that you're not fully executing the shot this we we see shooters on a really major collapse go here okay this is this is an exaggeration but here so this shooter um these could be mini collapses where we're really like holding on here, but this bow arm is, is um, we're not going toward the target with, with the tension and direction on both sides of the shot. We're going, instead of toward the target, we're actually going this way, this way. And that string, you know, if, if it's coming off the face, it only has to come off just a smidge. Um, we're not going toward the target and away from the target with our release hand. So we're not going here finishing we're going here and typically this hand's coming out i mean again it's it's millimeters but those millimeters from 18 meters will change from um essentially will change from middle of the target to this distance right here um so these are just some ways and i, I wanted to do a vlog like this to for people to i want you to start thinking about well what is the difference in that shot and why did it land here don't be content with all oh, my arrows are in the eight don't be content with with that start to think about what you know where's where am i lacking consistency and before you know it you'll start to feel 
um, you'll start to feel a very specific difference in, you know, let's say these are good shots. These one in the middle between that arrow and you'll know exactly what you did here or you'll know exactly what you did down here. So on and so forth. So, you know, this is a short one. It's not anything crazy, but I just think it's important that we we sometimes need to. Um, it's OK to be over analytical, but you need to go and shoot your shot. You know, like we talked about and we talked about in the last po podcast with Dick Tone, you know, you need to go to blind bail. You need to go to blank bail, short range. You need to know what the perfect shot feels like. And if you don't know, go do that first. Shoot, you know, 10, 15 rounds at like five yards on a three spot or 10 yards or blind bail, you know, eyes closed. So you know exactly what you want that shot to feel like. And then when you go to 18 meters, you know, shoot until you get it wrong. And then when you get it wrong, go back and shoot blind bail again to get it right. And then go back to 18 meters and shoot it again. And as you do that enough, you'll start to recognize these things. Like I talked about today, the fingers getting caught in that bottom, you know, for me, my string gets caught in my bottom finger every once in a while. Um, it happens less now that I've cranked up the weight, but there's definitely a, a, a diminishing return on how high you go to get the string to come through your fingers and weight versus the target panic and being able to hold and, and hold in the middle with ease and stuff like that. There's a diminishing return there. Um, you know, heavier isn't always better. As a matter of fact, I don't think it is better at all. Go only as heavy as you, as your tune is necessary for you have to, to get to 50 meters or whatever your game of choice is. Um, you know, I, I recognize when my bow arm is moving, you know, if it, my, for me, I settle um, right at the top here and I'm, I'm actually going to right here. This is where I settle the tip of my arrow now because I settle it. I stage it right here. I don't look at anything else. I just stage it. Boom, stop. Check my string blur. And then I come back. And if that arrow isn't there, you know, if that arrow, say, I'm going to, I'm going to make a, uh, like a circle here. If, say that thing floats off, which is my natural float is left. Say that thing floats left a little bit, or let's, let's even go a little bit further over. Right, right there. Say my, I float left. You know, I want to pause, stay in that conscious mind and try to bring that back and keep it more times than not. When my holding position is really good, it stays there. I don't have to mess with it. It's just there. And then I can let that subconscious switch happen. At least that's the way I describe it. Um, and let that string pull through my fingers and just finish the shot. But, you know, it's, it's different for everyone. You know, nobody's saying you have to shoot this way. But what I am saying is that these are some things that could help you um, in the long run, analyze your shot, know what your perfect shot is, know, start identifying, this is what I did. How do I fix it? Um, and I think you're going to see a more consistent and, you know, it's definitely a more fun game, even if you're not shooting great, knowing what you're doing wrong and then working on trying to fix it. Um, even in, in a tournament, you know, sometimes you just have to chalk it up to a learning experience and work on making progress right as it's happening um it's it really puts you in a better mindset as well um in competition because you have the confidence bill to say this is what i did um this is what i got to do to fix it so all right i hope this helps you have a good one thanks for watching this uh coaching vlog of the barebell project